Welcome to our end of week news bulletin. My name is Koplo Kibwanga Ferdinand. The KDF weekly bulletin is a show to keep you updated on events undertaken by the Ministry of Defence over the week. In today's bulletin, CS Defence officiates a two-day induction workshop for Parliamentary Committee on Defence. Mwak partners with Family Bank of Kenya. Quarterly security meeting with Lamu leaders. Kenya Navy observes International Day of Forests. Increased collaboration for sustainable security solutions between Kenya Defense Forces and Ugandan's People Defense Forces. And in sports, Moi Airbase emerge winners in football and volleyball matches. Honorable Aden Duale, the Cabinet Secretary for Defence, has urged members of Parliament to pass the regulations on National Peace Support Operations Fund proposed by the Defence Council. He noted that the kitty shall be critical in funding peace support operations undertaken by Kenya Defence Forces, the National Police Service and any other security organs as captured in Article 240, Section 8A of the Kenya Constitution. The CS made the remarks while briefing on national peace support operations when he appeared before the National Assembly Committee on Delegated Legislations in Naivasha. He informed the committee that, globally, Kenya has been one of the major troops contributing country in peacekeeping missions, but has over the years experienced financial constraints, which has made it hard to fund peace support operations. Honorable Duale told the committee chaired by Nabkoi, Member of Parliament Samuel Chepkonga that once the funds are in place, it shall facilitate force generation and force projection activities as well as financing capacity building programs in training and infrastructure development. He disclosed that the funding shall further aid in carrying out research, monitoring and evaluation of peace-related activities and help the units to attain appropriate levels to participate in the United Nations peacekeeping missions. According to the regulation, the Defence Principal Secretary shall supervise and control the administration of the funds. General Robert Kibochi, Kenya's Chief of Defence Forces, joined other East Africa Chiefs of Defence Forces for the sixth meeting convened in Bujumbura, Burundi, to review and evaluate the security situation in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. In his opening remarks, General Prime Niangabo, the chairperson and chief of defense forces of Burundi National Defense Force, reiterated the outcomes of the fifth meeting of East Africa Community Chiefs of Defense Forces and Defense Staff. The fifth meeting, held on 9th of February 2023 in Nairobi, Kenya, was aimed at deciding on the reconfiguration of East Africa Community Regional Force deployment for enhancing security in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. He further emphasized that the presence of the East Africa Community Chiefs of Defense Forces and Defense Staff at the meeting was a clear demonstration for their commitment to resolving the security issues in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo and the region in general. During the meeting, Major General Jeff Nyaga, the East Africa Community Regional Force Commander, updated the delegates on the security situation in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. He noted that the provinces of North Kivu, South Kivu and Ituri remained volatile due to activities of local and foreign armed groups. It was also observed that M23 had withdrawn from areas of Kilolirwe, Mushake, Karuba, Negenero, Malehe, Kibirizi and Mueso. The group had partially withdrawn from Kibumba and Rumangabo. It was further noted that the reposturing of forces in North Kivu had taken shape with Burundi completing deployment while Uganda and South Sudan were expected to deploy soon. The deliberations of the meeting are geared towards creating lasting peace and stability in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The meeting was attended by representatives from all East Africa Community Partner States, East Africa Community Regional Force, United Nations Organization Stabilization Mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ad Hoc Verification Mechanism, and East Africa Community Secretariat. Honorable Aden Duale, the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, opened a two-day induction workshop between the Ministry of Defense officials and members of the Departmental Committee on Defense, Intelligence, and Foreign Relations of the National Assembly in Mombasa. The forum was aimed at appraising members of the committee on the various roles the ministry is undertaking within its mandate. 
Honorable Duale provided an elaborate presentation of the operations the Kenya Defense Forces is undertaking in various parts of the country and beyond. He added that the fight against banditry in North Rift has yielded tremendous results in the past few weeks. The Cabinet Secretary also disclosed that the military under the directive of the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces is going to rehabilitate schools in the region and construct new ones. This will enable children in the area to learn just as their peers in other parts of the country. The CES underscored that the military is at advanced stages of devolving military establishments currently concentrated in major towns to interior parts of the country. He observed that security threats are currently originating from such areas. The CS was accompanied by Patrick Mariru, Principal Secretary for Defense, Lieutenant General Francis Ogola, Vice Chief of Defense Forces, among other senior officials from the ministry. And still in Mombasa County, Major General Jimson Mutai, Commander Kenya Navy, hosted members of the Departmental Committee on Defense, Intelligence and Foreign Relations of the National Assembly at the Kenya Navy headquarters in Mombasa. Chaired by the Belgut Member of Parliament, Honorable Nelson Koech, the committee was briefed on the organization, roles and functions of the Kenya Navy and how it executes its operations in response to contemporary maritime threats to safety and security in our territorial seas. While visiting the Kenya Navy fleet, the committee members were given a familiarization tour on board Kenya Navy ship Jasiri and a short trip to the sea. They were also briefed on the different operations and capabilities of the Kenya Shipyard Limited and thereafter witnessed the midlife refit of Kenya Navy ship Shupavu. The visit was part of a two-day induction workshop aimed at uprising the members of the committee on duties undertaken by the Ministry of Defense in defending and protecting the country. Lieutenant General Francis Ogola, Vice Chief of Defense Forces, visited security officers operating under Operation Maliza Uhalifu in a bid to boost their morale. During his visit, Lieutenant General Ogola lauded the security officers for their diligence in combating banditry and ensuring sustainable peace and security in the six counties of the North Rift declared as disturbed. He encouraged the officers to keep soldiering on, ensuring they remain extremely alert and vigilant to combat banditry in the region. In his address, the Vice Chief of Defense Forces censored the security officers on the need to engage local residents and the National Government Administration officers while conducting the operation. He emphasized on the need for goodwill of the local residents as they have infinite information about the region. He reassured the officers of the result to remain objective until the mission is achieved. He further asked the operation commanders to consider having weekly assessments of the operation in order to reverse strategies if need be, and assured the troops of full support for the defense headquarters. The Vice Chief for Defense Forces visited Chelmingot Command Center in Baringo County, Chesinget, and Pura Multi-Agency Camp in Samburu County. He was accompanied by the Operation Malizo Relief Commander, Brigadier Ahmed Saman, and the Revolted Regional Police Commander, Mr. Tom Modero, among other senior government officials. The Kenya Defense Forces medical personnel in the coastal region concluded a two-week emergency care training conducted by the Defense College of Health Sciences and Kenya Red Cross Training Institute at the Kenya Naval Training College Mtongwe in Mombasa. The training was aimed at imparting knowledge and skills to participants on how to stabilize trauma patients and improve patient resuscitation within KDF hospitals. The medical personnel covered both theory and practical sessions relevant in achieving competent-oriented training. The training comes at a time when Kenya Defense Forces is focusing on providing health care to its service personnel and families through the opening of regional hospitals to ensure that the troops remain mission-ready. In his closing remarks, Colonel Evans Oguga, the Deputy Commander Kenya Navy Base, Mutongwe, underscored the importance of training as an integral pillar of healthcare, human resource development, thus the need to upscale the levels of knowledge and skills among healthcare workers. Colonel Dr. Muithia Ngundo, the Chief of Naval Medical Services, expressed gratitude to the Kenya Red Cross team for the actualization of the course and urged the participants to share their skills and knowledge acquired, as this will have a great impact on patients during emergency care. 
Zainab Mohamed, head of short medical courses at the Kenya Red Cross, thanked the Kenya Navy for the opportunity and said she looked forward to the future partnership that will benefit the service personnel. The courses covered include basic life support, advanced cardiac life support, and advanced trauma life support. And now back to Nairobi County, where the Military Wives Association of Kenya, popularly known as MWAC, and the Family Bank Group officially entered into partnership and launched the Construction Skills Development Project at the Ulinzi Sports Complex in Langata, Nairobi. This is in a bid to work hand in hand with young men and women by equipping them with necessary skills in plumbing and electrical work and in effect prepare them for both local and global markets. Speaking during the signing and the launch of the program ceremony, General Robert Kibochi, Chief of Defense Forces, lauded Mwak for stepping up and establishing the association which looks out for the soldiers' welfare. He appreciated their keen eye on the well-being of the soldiers' family. These ladies, uh, two years ago, uh, came together and decided to establish themselves within the Mwak uh, environment uh, to look at the family. Uh, and this, within the last two years, uh, I've been the Chief of Defense Forces, have immensely benefited uh, from their counsel, from their advice, from, from their ability to see around the corners uh, and to listen to the soldier also, to listen to the family. General Kibochi further highlighted the fact that the demand for the skills is high and stated that the launch is timely to fill the gap and at the same time equip the youth with hands-on skills to help them in life. He assured the participants that the placement will be based on merit for students after completion of the courses at the recently established Ulinzi Construction Company. Mr. John Wamiri, the Executive Director of Family Group Foundation, said that the Family Bank Group is elated to be part of the journey as an enabler of the Chief of Defense Forces' vision of sharpening the arrowhead. He also pointed out that through the partnership, Mwak and Family Group are bridging the gap between the level market demands and establishing a career path for young men and women who are dependents of the KDF service men and women. Major General Juma Munikai, General Officer Commanding Eastern Command alongside Colonel Joel Tanui, Operation Amani Boni Commander, held a quarterly security meeting to discuss the security situation in Boni Enclave with elected county leaders at the office of the county commissioner in Lamu County. Here is the story in details. Speaking during the deliberations, Major General Munikai pointed out that a comprehensive approach which integrates government and security agencies in bringing normalcy to the areas under Operation Amani Boni is feasible with the support of elected leaders. In addition, he called out for synergy across the leadership aimed at uniting and integrating the communities in Lamu. He also called upon the leaders to engage strategically so as to empower the residents on how to benefit from the locally available national and county social economic opportunities in the region. Lamu Governor Issa Timami thanked KDF for their support over the years, assuring them that the county leadership is tirelessly working to improve the livelihood of its people by creating a conducive environment for locals and investors. Major General Munikai also visited the port of Lamu, where he met with security commanders of the facility and was briefed on the situation since it was operationalized. He later took a tour of the port, where operations were going on for MV Boston Trader, the 19th vessel to dock at the port. Colonel Evans Oguga, Deputy Commander Kenya Navy Base Mtongwe, led Kenya Navy personnel and other environmental stakeholders from the coastal region in marking the International Day of Forest at Moy Forces Academy in Mombasa. The occasion saw the Kenya Forest Service provide a total of 200 different tree species planted by Mombasa County Administrative Officers, National Youth Service personnel, students and parents from Moy Forces Academy among others. Mr. Matthew Wambugu, the Deputy County Commissioner Likoni Sub-County, spoke on the importance of teaching children the benefits of tree planting. He also noted food security as one of the long-term benefits of planting trees and urged the communities to plant more trees. Mr. Benjamin Mwindi, Mombasa County Conservator, urged the participants to plant more trees, quoting this year's theme, Forest and Health. He said that a healthy forest will bring about healthy people as forests are home to about 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. The conservator further pointed out that an estimated 1.6 million people use trees for their livelihood, such as food, shelter, energy, and income generation. 
He also added that people in cities depend on forest resources for clean air and fresh water. Zote tukiwa hapa, tunajua umuhimu wa miti. Na tumeambiwa umuhimu wa kuwa na miti. Kuwazia madawa. Tuna madawa ya hapo. Kivuli na nini na mito yetu kuendelea mizuri. Inatokana na kuwa na miti. The International Day of Forests was established by a resolution of the United Nations General Assembly in 2013 and is observed annually on 21st March. It is geared at celebrating and raising awareness of all types of forests and trees for the benefit of current and future generations. And still in Mtongwe, where a team from the Kenya Navy Hospital Dental Department joined the rest of the world in observing the World Oral Health Day by providing dental checkups to learners and staff at the Kenya Navy Primary and Junior Secondary Schools at the Kenya Navy Base Mtongwe. The World Oral Health Day is observed annually on 20th of March, launching a year-long campaign dedicated towards raising global awareness on issues of oral health and the importance of oral hygiene. The effort is aimed at synergizing governments, health associations and the general public to work together to achieve healthier mouths and happier lives. In celebration of the World Oral Health Day, Colonel Dr. Jethro Wambogo, the senior dentist coast region, kicked off the day-long activity at the school's compound where the entire school fraternity received oral diagnosis in tandem with this year's theme, Be Happy of Your Mouth. Where we are here is because today is World Oral Health Day. The staff and learners were taken through the best practices and instruction for proper oral hygiene in order to prevent dental carriers and other mouth diseases. They were also sensitized on the effect of poor dental health, which can be a contributing factor to severe health issues such as cardiovascular disease, obesity, strokes, and breathing problems. <laughs> Kenya Defense Forces troops from 75 Artillery Battalion stationed at Nguisusu Military Camp under Operation Maliza Uhalifu in collaboration with Beyond Zero Campaign, Ministry of Health Physicians from Olmoran and Rumuruti conducted a two-week medicamp at Kirima, Laikipia West Sub-County in Laikipia. The exercise covered areas of Olmoran Market, Kisi Indogo, Ngarena Rock, Olmotonyi and Nguisusu villages. Residents benefited from free medical services such as general medical checkups including upper respiratory conditions, muscular skeleton disorders, skin conditions, urinary tract infections also known as UTI, diarrhea, screening of breast and cervical cancer, ear, nose and throat, nutrition assessment, immunization and antenatal care. The locals were also taken through sessions on good hygiene, proper food handling, proper nutrition, the importance of antenatal care, clinic visits, and regular hydration. Led by Major Felix McKenzie, the officer commanding 11 battery artillery, the communities were encouraged to enroll their children in schools to manage their illiteracy levels in the area and be at par with others in the rest of the country. The locals expressed their gratitude to the Kenya Defense Forces and the Beyond Zero campaign for the initiative of providing them with free medical services. In return, they promised to support all government projects and initiatives aimed at achieving peaceful coexistence and lasting peace. The medical team managed to attend to 807 patients, a majority of whom were women and children. The Military Wives Association of Kenya celebrated its second anniversary and subsequently held its annual general meeting at the Defense Headquarters in Nairobi. The celebration was in acknowledgement of the great achievements realized by the association since its inception in 2021, while the annual general meeting provided an opportunity for members to deliberate on opportunities available to the association as they explored ways to enrich and grow across all ranks. <laughs> Speaking during the event, Mrs. Tabitha Kibochi, the MOAC chairperson, underscored the importance of increasing membership while calling on members to be good ambassadors. She noted that MOAC is currently sponsoring orphans within the Kenya Defense Forces and therefore urged for members' cooperation in bringing forth more sponsors to aid and educate needy children. 
Professor Anne Mungai, Deputy Vice Chancellor Defense University Kenya, urged Mwak to be at the forefront in championing for family issues. She assured Mwak members of her unwavering support as she was passionate about empowering women. Mrs. Helen Nkaiseri, wife to the late Cabinet Secretary of Interior, Major General Retired Joseph Nkaiseri, made a special presentation that appreciated and acknowledged Mwak's positive impact to KDF. She urged the members to seize the opportunity and help others in society and also focus on building networks and friendship. Happy birthday, dear Mwak! Happy Honorable Aden Duale, the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, this week hosted Ms. Lisa Filipito, the outgoing head of United Nations Support Office in Somalia at the Defense Headquarters in Nairobi. The CS retaliated Kenya's commitment to add value and sustain the peace process to help rebuild Somalia that has been under constant attack from Al-Qaeda-linked terror group Al-Shabaab. He also noted that Kenya remains steadfast in fighting terrorism and violent extremism in the region, which was evidenced by the appointment of Kenya's high-ranking officer, Major General Peter Muteti, as the Atmis Deputy Force Commander. Honorable Aiden Duale further said that Kenya is prepared for the anticipated drawdown of troops from the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia, also known as Atmis. The Kenya Defense Forces soldiers shall be deployed along Kenya's borders to defend and protect the Republic against any external aggression in line with their constitutional mandate. On her part, Ms. Filipeto said plans to have a joint command center for the troops contributing countries in Somalia are at an advanced stage to promote synergy and information sharing. The envoy is scheduled to retire soon after the end of her tour of duty in the mission area. Mr. Patrick Mariru, the Principal Secretary for Defense, has affirmed Kenya's commitment to remain the anchor state and a key partner in finding peace and stability in the East African region and beyond. The PS outlined the successes of Kenya Defense Forces in Somalia and Eastern region of the Democratic Republic of Congo, where Kenya has deployed troops for peacekeeping operations. Mr. Mariru made the remarks when he held a meeting with the United States Deputy Head of Mission, Mr. Mark Dillard, at the Defense Headquarters in Nairobi. Mr. Patrick Mariru, the Principal Secretary for Defense, appreciated the bilateral defense cooperation between Kenya and the U.S. in enhancing maritime security along the Kenyan coastline and the partnership with the Kenya United States Liaison Office. His sentiments were echoed by Lieutenant General Francis Ogola, the Vice Chief of Defense Forces, who affirmed that as the drawdown of the African Union transition mission in Somalia nears, the Kenya Defense Forces is determined to have significantly degraded the attacks of the terrorists, while at the same time defending human rights. Mr. Dillard said the U.S. remains committed in supporting Kenya in the fight against terrorism and violent extremism. Kenya Defense Forces and Uganda People's Defense Forces held a two-day joint defense committee engagement for sustainable security solutions here in Nairobi. The meeting was co-chaired by Brigadier Richard Monzia, the Chief of Strategic Plans and Policy at the Defense Headquarters, and his Ugandan counterpart, Brigadier General Joseph Balikudembe. In his remarks, Brigadier Monzia acknowledged that the signing of the Defense Cooperation Agreement in 2022 enhanced the long cordial relationship between the two countries. He added that the agreement has brought about constant engagement and increased collaboration between the two militaries as partners in seeking sustainable security solutions. Brigadier General Joseph Balikudembe lauded the Kenyan delegation for espousing a cordial relationship with Uganda, adding that working together strengthens the existing good relationship between the two countries. On bilateral defense cooperation agreement, he recognized it as the legal instrument which binds the two countries to cooperate and address common strategic security interests. During the deliberations, considerations were made to alleviate food insecurity in the shared border regions, noting that climate change had rendered the communities perennially food insecure and limited their sources of livelihood. The resource scarcity had compelled some of them to migrate in search of pasture and water points. So really I think uh, this was a, a very fruitful engagement uh, which uh, pushed the limits from the normal areas of uh, discussion to look into uh, other ways of addressing our challenges. 
The meeting underscored that continued cooperation increases understanding as to how both Uganda and Kenya may use military forces both in crisis and at peacetime to deliver stability and prosperity as well as shape a defense culture. They also deliberated on establishing other socio-economic programs aimed at integrating border communities. The Kenya Navy joined other Allied Maritime Forces at a hotel in Mombasa to mark the end of the multinational maritime exercise dubbed Cutlass Express 2023. The two-week-long exercise was aimed at developing capabilities of participating countries in the conduct of operational planning, maritime safety and security operations, maritime domain awareness, information sharing and effective use of the rule of law during maritime operations. Speaking through the ceremony, Captain Geo Townsend of the U.S. Navy thanked the government of Kenya for hosting the international exercise and other participants affirming the importance of the exercise. The endeavor strengthened maritime capability by improving the participants' maritime domain awareness and enhancing information sharing between the maritime operations centers. Exercise Card Class Express is an annual maritime exercise sponsored by the U.S. Africa Command that engaged participants from Canada, Comoros, Djibouti, France, Georgia, Greece, Kenya, Madagascar, Mauritius, Mozambique, Seychelles, Tanzania, United Kingdom, and the United States. The participants represented a shared commitment by providing collaborative opportunities for Africa and other international partners to address the international maritime concerns. Good, thank you. The Kenya Defense Forces, in conjunction with the Women in International Security Horn of Africa, and the Special Operations Command Africa hosted a Women in Security Conference at the International Peace Support Training Center in Karen, Nairobi. In line with the theme, Leveraging Women's Role in an Era of Complex Risks, the event aimed at fostering collaboration between security actors and local communities to promote peace and security. This event culminated with Amani Mtaani football matches held at the Humanitarian Peace Support School in Embakasi, Nairobi to build synergy and promote gender equity through sporting activities. In her opening remarks, Brigadier Joyce CTNA, Director International Peace Support Training Center, emphasized on the importance of having a gendered approach in all peace support operations. She said, these enhances a more holistic approach to such operations without discriminating any group of people. This, she emphasized, is in line with the United Nations Security Council resolution that positions gender equality and women's empowerment as critical to international peace and security. Dear participants, more often the women's role in security is undervalued. However, women make significant contribution to uh, conflict prevention, resolution, and peace building. Globally, the importance of women's equal and full participation as active agents in peace and security is, uh, is emphasized. The United States Commanding General of Combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa Major General Jami Shole, pointed out that different security institutions have developed policies and robust strategies to effect the gender policy in their operation. This conference is important mostly because it's one of a series of engagements. A standalone conference where we get together and talk to each other helps us to highlight the problems we already know exist. Ms. Fauzia Ali, the Women in International Security Horn of Africa president, opined that women play a critical role in advancing peace and security in the society. She added that harnessing their full potential requires commitment, improved institutional capacity, and increasing the financial and human resource in the formal, informal peace and human security sectors. What a, uh, uh, fantastic what a oh! Moi Airbase emerged winners against Laikipia Airbase in football and volleyball matches held at Moi Airbase Cinema Cosa Grounds in Nairobi. In football, Moi Airbase won by two goals to one, while in volleyball, Laikipia conceded a defeat of two sets to nil. The games sought to improve on relationships, enhance physical fitness, competitiveness and spirit decor amongst the officers. 
During the matches, the fans at Moyaya Basin and Makosa grounds were treated to entertaining volleyball and football matches. Captain Abdulaziz Abdulkadir and second lieutenant Gideon Gitonga from Moyaya Base scored two goals that saw the base emerge as winners. The only goal for Lekipi Air Base was scored by lieutenant Agalagomba Besa. The event was presided over by Brigadier Samuel Kukori, base commander Moyaya Base, whom urged the officers and service members to take advantage of such foreign to network and build comradeship among themselves. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We look forward to your feedback via our official social media handles and your viewership next Friday on the KDF Weekly News Bulletin. My name is Koploki Bwanga Ferdinand. Goodbye.